Greetings, dear ones. I'm Crying of Magnetic Service. My partner steps aside, but he's still connected. We have said it before, it is not a takeover. Channeling is not a takeover. Channeling is a meld with permission. An agreement with the consciousness of a human being with his own higher self. An agreement that is not hard to make as long as the box he is in of belief and tradition allows it. And if you have been taught that this is not appropriate, it's difficult to channel. It requires that training and practice where it becomes comfortable. For my partner, it's more than comfortable. <laughs> For he is admitted to wanting to just stay here and not come back. It's a beautiful place where the human being can sit and be for the few moments where the information is delivered. He becomes a translator. He takes my information and linearizes it and he puts it in his own language. It's a process. The filters that the human being have, which are then developed by the box of his tradition and upbringing, have to be cleared. And then the message will become succinct, as complete as possible, and delivered in a way that makes sense. And that is why I'm giving him two times on this one. Dear ones, as you listen to these things this night, they may not all make sense. And so that is why we give the option to listen to them later, perhaps even for them to be transcribed. So that there would be a time when you could sit with them and ponder them. So that you could link them to some of the other bits of information and understand how they are connected. Right now, my partner is connected corporally with me. And you hear his voice. It is difficult to explain how such a thing could be. Appropriate in all ways, we have told you before. And the ones who are hearing it now are the correct ones to hear it now. And so as I begin this lesson, I want to remind you why we're giving it. For we've never discussed these things in this way. It is time to lay the foundation, the groundwork of the future. And the best way to do it is to give an exposure of how things work inside you. And as we expose these things, we use language that you're not used to, uh, concepts that you haven't really worked with before. And we're aware of that. But it has to start where it has to start. And in the room, there are life paths at the moment who are using what we're going to discuss and some who have no idea what we're going to talk about. <laughs> that is a respect for the variety of consciousness here. For the steps of learning that you are on. For some of you have been doing this kind of work since you can remember. And others of you are just now awakening to the potentials of who you are. Regardless, we give the story and the teaching as though all of you were on board with all of it. And that is appropriate for the day. 
There are processes within the human body that are very difficult to explain. They are esoteric processes. We have given you just recently several of them. How they are recalibrating. And just lately, how they work. We started talking about the synchronicity and how it works with the human body. And Gaia. And the guides. And the other side of the veil. We've, we've given you a lecture on the elusive Akash. How does it talk to the cells of your body? Is it in your brain? Is it not? What does it say? And you can hear these messages in the past. We've talked to you about the conceptual belief systems and how they are starting to work in your favor. And how consciousness is becoming less linear. All of these things would seem to be concepts that are high minded. But some of you are using them right now. There is one in particular which we have saved till now. Because it is difficult to explain. And there are revelations today about how it works. That we have not said before. Or explained before. There is a full system that we have channeled to you in the past called the nine attributes of the human being. These attributes interrelate in a circle. And I want my partner to teach them in the near future. I want him to develop it into at least three parts of training. So that people can put them together, see how they're related, and understand themselves better. The nine attributes, as we have channeled, were three groups of three. Not that difficult. The difficulty starts to see how they relate to each other. And what they are. And what they might mean to you. How they're connected today but how they will be connected tomorrow. Nine of them. We told you that three of them, one in each group of three, have the same name, the higher self. We told you that there was the human corporeal group, the soul group, and the support group, and that the higher self was in each one of those. But the one we want to talk about today is squarely in what we would call the human corporeal group. And yet, like so many of the others, there's more to it than it seems. And the name of it is innate. And so the word innate is going to be a part of the human consciousness that all of you have at the corporeal level which we are going to discuss today in a way we've never discussed telling you only a little bit about it but enough hopefully to tweak your interest and to make you understand that there's more to you than what you think innate Innate has been described in the past as the smart part of your smell, of your, your sales. The smart part. Now that might indicate that there's a non-smart part. <laughs> but let us say it's a more ignorant part. And believe it or not, that ignorant part is your brain. <laughs> Now the brain perceives many things and it's a calculator to the max. It's the best memory instrument on the earth today. Everything that you've experienced is in there. It tempers how you behave, what you do, how you act, what you believe, what you think. 
But let me tell you where it falls short. It doesn't know anything about what's going on in your body. <laughs> you can intellectualize for a very long time. And yet you will never find out from the brain how your cells are doing. Do you have an allergy to something you have not experienced yet? Perhaps. To a food that you have never tasted. To a chemical you have not seen. How would you know? The innate knows. The innate is the smart corporeal body. It knows everything about everything. It actually is as smart as your brain, but in a different way. So what you do to find out if you're allergic to something is to place that something in your hand and muscle test. And that is called kinesiology. A big word for something very simple. <laughs> and in the muscle testing you are using the body's chemistry to give you a yes or no signal about something it knows and you do not. Muscle testing. So in the process of that procedure <laughs> do you understand you have acknowledged that there is a part of your body system that knows more than your brain. Oh, it knows a lot more than what you're allergic to, my friend. It is so tuned in to your DNA. It is part of your process. It is part of your evolvement. It's more than even that. Innate. Innate handshakes with your higher self at all the three levels we discussed, and that is difficult for us to describe. But if you put it in a circle chart, you'd draw the lines between them and you'd see what I mean. It's your smart body. Does it find a place in illogic? To think for a moment that you'd have some kind of a disease attacking your body and not know it. Don't you find it odd, human being, that there are certain kinds of diseases that can lurk in you and you only know it through your discomfort or through your death? <laughs> And you would never have the signal from your brain except pain. But the innate knows it when it happens. The innate knows it when it entered your body. As the white blood cells go to the places they need to go to fight and you have no idea, the innate is on alert. What is it and where is it? This is difficult. We told you, dear human being, that the elusive Akash information was not in your brain. You cannot go to your brain to find out who you used to be and when. Because the brain only receives that information as it needs it as transmitted from your DNA. The innate is the same. It's not in your brain. But it's in every cell of your body. Every piece of DNA. But the difference between innate and the Akash is the innate is on top. It is always broadcasting. It's always there. And if you know how to listen to it and where it is, you can tune in. Muscle testing is one way. There are others. Some of you know. Innate is that which responds to acupuncture. Did you know that? <laughs> Your brain does not. 
And Nate is aware of all things and is broadcasting all the time. It broadcasts so greatly that it flows right into that which you call the Merkaba of the body. Now we're talking about a field around your body that pulses very strongly with information that those who have the ability to see can read. Welcome to the medical intuitive who can stand before you in various degrees of success and read your innate. They don't have to muscle test to know you've got something going on. They can see it in the field around your body. Now you think that a medical intuitive is looking at your liver <laughs> or your heart and is doing some kind of analysis because that's what you understand. That's your box. You had no idea that they are sensing the quantum energy that your innate is broadcasting of your health of what's going on in the chemistry of what might be developing inside you it's different than you thought isn't it that's the innate and that's only one of the things that innate does it's the smart cellular part of your body but it's not just about that what I'm going to tell you next we have given you before but I wish to explain it better your innate is also a governor of what you need now turn a page with me we have talked in the past about mining the Akash so let us open that door for a moment is it possible dear one that you could go into the vast storehouse of the attributes of your past lives and pick out something you need today and the answer is yes and the way it's done has to pass muster and permission of the innate <laughs> because the innate smart body knows what you need it is then the governor, the filter of what you can pull out of your kosh and use. And it will say no to frivolous things and say yes to the things that will allow you to cure yourself of disease, live longer, and increase the percentage of efficiency of your DNA. It doesn't care how you look <laughs> like you do. He cares about your health. If you want to go into your Akash and pull out something that you need for survival, it's right there with you. If you want to make clearer skin, it isn't. <laughs> if you see what I mean. It's the governor for mining the Akash. By the way, the Akash is supremely mineable. You have earned what you've lived, dear ones. And it's not in there that far. It's not deep. It all lays in a soup that is available all the time for you. If you have a disease in your body right now, dear one, and you want to mine the Akash in the way that you only would know how, only your consciousness in practice and maturity can work on a problem that is yours only to mine who you are and who you were and to bring forward that which would cure it the innate is responsible for spontaneous remission for the innate can go in and pull out the things in the Akash and place them into your cellular structure that's how smart it is did you ever sit in a meeting and something is said or a feeling can happen and you get chills what are they you would say they are chills of validation 
Guess where they came from. The innate. The innate is signaling you truth, not your brain. Dear ones, your brain will get in the way. It's the brain that has the box of belief. It's the brain that has who you are based on experience and memory. It is the innate that knows the truth. One of the attributes of the future human being, and we have given you this before, is to build a bridge between your human consciousness and your innate. It is one of the, the three things in the cellular part of the nine attributes, the human energies part, that a bridge can be built so that you don't have to muscle test, so that you can become your own medical intuitive about your own cellular structure. Doesn't that make sense? So when something invades your body that is not appropriate and proper, that your brain would never tell you and that your innate knows about, when the bridge is complete, your intuition will say, there's something different. And you may not know what it is, but you will go to somebody who can help you to know, and it'll be far earlier than waiting for your brain to give you pain, if you know what I mean. That's also innate. Innate does so many things for you. And some of you are starting to get another picture, and this is where I'm going. It's a concept we have not really broached before. We're going to call it something. Please do not misunderstand. You only have one word for this. The word is called brain. So we are going to give you another concept. The innate is your second brain. It doesn't function like your first one at all. But it is smart and it is intelligent and it knows what you need and it's the governor to keep you from picking up the wrong thing just like your brain is in a different kind of way let me show you what I mean here is a puzzle a conundrum of medicine when an accident happens and it severs your spinal cord and leaves you with no feeling or operations from the waist down there's some interesting things that continue to function one of them is your heart another is digestion there are others also that function the organs of the body many of them continue to work even though you are told that your brain, your central nervous system, is the one that sends the signals to make them work. And suddenly, the conduit where the signals are sent is broken. So what keeps them going? When you have a heart that depends upon signals from the brain on a regular basis, and the brain is disconnected, and it's still going, how do you think that works? And now I'll tell you, because the innate takes over. It's always there. And the organs will function. Even reproduction happens. The heart keeps going. Digestion. It's a second heart. It's a second liver, you might say. Innate is a second brain. <laughs> And these are the things that sometimes medicine has puzzled over. I just gave you the answer. There is another intelligence in your body that is smarter about cellular things than your brain is. So now I want to I wrap this all up. What are you supposed to do with this information? I want you to get in touch with an eight. <laughs> It's the heart connection, dear ones. The higher self and the innate and human consciousness 
are the three human energies that need to meld. Human consciousness, higher self, and innate. When DNA starts to work at a higher efficiency, there are bridges that start to be built between these things. You'll start to feel them when you recognize and sense truth. When you start to recognize discernment and cognize it for what it is. When you stop looking around you for answers and they come from within. When you put down the nonsense of those who would tell you that you were born dirty or that there are societies trying to control you or that everywhere you look there's a conspiracy against you and you start understanding the truth that you are a piece of God on this planet and you're smarter than that because you can discern what is and what is not happening the human being becomes smarter when the two brains come together you're able then to see your own health situation, to catch things before they get out of hand, to know what you need, to know how you need to eat based upon your akash, who you used to be, and what satisfies the cellular structure the best. Every single one of you has a different diet based upon what works for you. There is no such thing as an enlightened diet except for you. <laughs> We've told you these things before, but we never told you where it came from. The innate is smart. Now, as these things start to build a bridge between them, everything starts to change and the questions that you ask in this room and they're always the same. How can I? Your name goes here. Every single one of you. Well, I like this, but how can I? Fill in the blank. I want to go here. I want to know this. How can I? Fill in the blank. And the day is coming when you never have to ask. Any more than today when you would ask, how do I get from A to B? You don't stop somebody on the street and ask them how to walk. <laughs> you don't ask somebody how to get in your car or where it's going. That is you with you and you got it figured out. But when it comes to esoteric things, you don't. And you feel you're in the dark. And there's missing pieces. When these things start to meld, the missing pieces will start to fill in and you're going to be a lot smarter about you. And one of the things that's going to occur is you'll know you're not from here. You're from the great central sun. You're where I am from. You'll know that you're eternal. You'll know that you've only you've had more than only one life. And it will be it'll be something that you know just like innate knows it. And not something you're trying to intellectualize with the computer in your head. It's the heart connection to the max. Innate is what creates emotion. Let me tell you, dear ones, innate helps you fall in love. It gives you energies that you can't explain that make you just a little nuts. <laughs> and nobody can explain that. And innate knows all about it. It changes every cell of your body. It's able to ring true. There's nothing like it. Can you see how innate will serve you? And how it shakes hands with a higher self and knows about God in you. And this has been our story for this day about something in you you may have not known the extent of it what it is how it works how important it is 
And it's you with you. It's not an entity inside you, dear ones. It's you. The smart part of yourselves. And so it is.